So we're a little delayed this morning. Um, we had some things going on here in the studio, we had some filming happening. So it just took me a little longer than usual to get here, but uh, here I am. And just checking to see if we have any comments, anybody showing up. I think pretty quiet so far, but uh, I have a, some different things going on today. I have some hand building to do. I have some glazing to do. So um, I'll just get into it. Can you all hear me? I'm gonna hope that's a yes, since I don't see any comments saying, hey, Kara, we can't hear you. Mariana says, hi from Florida. Hi there. I, um, so you know that I've been working on this sculpture. This is one of the things that I was working on when we first started. Cool, you can hear me. Um, when we, when I first started the Clay to Z stream, uh, I built this. So it's all hand built, it's all uh, mostly coil. Um, and I made a test piece that has a lot of texture to it, the same kind of texture as the sculpture does so that I could see what my different options looked like. So I have satin matte clear, clear satin here. This is the SM10, uh, not, not the HF satin matte. And I overlapped it a little bit with Satin Aribe and with Bluestone, which are PC glazes. And I also used it with some of the black, uh, ultra black underglaze and uh, coral, coral underglaze. That, that might be blush. Um, oh, I'm, I'm glad that the, the audio is working well. So um, I also tried putting the ultra black over and the blush over and the blush I don't think that you can see it in the video, but it is slightly, very, very slightly rough over the satin mat, which does not surprise me because the pink, um, the coral and blush underglazes, uh, their chemistry does sometimes get a little dry and a little rough when it's applied over a glaze. So uh, I'll keep that in mind. It's also a much uh, deeper pink than what I was hoping for. So, um, but I don't mind this kind of like washed off pink, but I think I'm gonna actually just stick with the black staining. And then I, I do really like both the blue stone, blue stone and satin Aribe on here. So, um, I am going to have to decide what I'm going to do. And uh, I know that if you use any kind of regular pencil, I know that a lot of people refer to a pencil as having lead. It's actually, I don't think they've made lead pencils for a very, very, very long time. Uh, pencils these days, the, the, uh, the writing part is actually made out of graphite. And graphite burns out and firing. So you can very easily draw uh, anything you want on your uh, bisqueware with just a regular pencil. And it will completely burn out when it's fired. So just any kind of any kind of pencil will do. And I'm putting eyes on this, but I think this side, this side, it works pretty well. 
this side not so much. So I've been contemplating putting features on this and how to do that and what kind of things I want to put on there. And, uh, and of course, you know, anybody who's been watching my videos knows how much I love putting tentacles on things. So I'm thinking I might do some big octopus tentacles and then go around it with either the blue stone or the satin aribe. Just kind of having fun with this. making sure I can see any comments coming in. Oh, cool. Here we go. So And I'm going to let this kind of chill out for a little while while I think about I want to do other things on there. And I'm going to get started with a different project. Oops. So, under glazes over there. So, what I'm working on. So, I, I did some. I'm sure, this is the clay that I want to use. It's 11 ounces. So, I've been working on small pieces, y'all see. And I wanted to get a little better with some of the wall pieces. So, uh, before I was making them as like really big pinch pots. And that works really well up to a certain size. Then there's a point at which I just can't make a pinch pot that big. So what I'm going to do, now I can do this a couple different ways. I can start from the wall. So think of this as my wall. I can start from the wall and build out, or I can start with pinch pot and then built towards the wall. Both of those work just fine, but I'm going to do this one, this first one, working, starting at the wall and working my way towards the outer surface. And I'm going to start with a coil, a thick coil. Just a reminder for anybody who um, tunes in that this is a studio that is shared. And so at times you might hear some background noise that sounds kind of random. You might hear voices, you might hear uh, wheels, you might hear uh, other kinds of sounds. Just no worries. Um, there are other people here. Let me tilt this down a little more so you can actually just see what I'm working on.
And feel free to ask questions. Just type them into the chat. And uh, I will answer as I can. I'm sure you have questions. They don't have to be regarding what I'm working on. They can be about other things. Uh, I know that there have been some questions about new products. Um, Sure, there have been some questions about old products. So lots of lots of things you can ask me about anything Amico related or just ceramic related. If I can answer it, I will. If I can't answer it, I will tell you so. Pamela says, good full moon morning. That's right. We have a full moon. As we come up on Halloween. So this piece I'm working on is going to get smoothed out, but at the moment it is going to be very lumpy, and that's okay. But I use big fat coils and then I thin them kind of a pinching as I go. Aw, thank you, Pamela. Pamela says, I sometimes have to watch you later, but the information you share is invaluable. Well, I'm glad that you get something out of this. Um, I enjoy sharing information. Now, because I haven't decided yet how this is going to be oriented, like I said, it's going to hang on the wall. So it's going to hang on the wall. But I haven't decided if it's going to hang this way. It's going to be abstract. I'm not worried about its shape. Or it's going to hang this way or the other way. So I'm going to make four lugs on here so that it can be hung in a variety of directions. And that way I don't have to make that decision just yet. I can make that decision after this is finished. Put my ponytail holder away. So just like making like a little jug handle. I'm going to make these at four points on here. So there will be four of them. And then I can choose a direction to hang it after it's been fired and glazed. Now, 
Now, there are some people who like to use epoxy to uh, attach hanging hardware. And there are some good epoxies out there. Uh, when it comes to glue, I, I would much prefer to use clay for my for attaching uh, picture wire, hanging hardware of any kind. Uh, I, I and I use picture wire rather than just hanging things on, on the edge of the clay because it's going to be fragile that way and you can have uh, the clay crack or break where it's resting on a screw or a nail or a bolt. Um, the picture wire is more secure and there is very heavy duty picture wire out there so I'm not worried about weight. But uh, uh, epoxies do age and they can fail over time. So I much prefer using uh, clay lugs to attach the picture wire uh, or holes that I can run picture wire through. It's just a little more secure in my opinion. Now, if you do use epoxies, uh, two part epoxies are going to be stronger than regular glue uh, and the longer the cure time the more secure the attachment so if you can get like a 24 hour epoxy that's going to work better than a five minute epoxy and you might need to tape things into place while they uh, cure So I want to make nice secure lugs to hold that picture wire in place. Now that those are on there, I can continue with shaping this and building it up over. Actually, looking at it, I think it's probably going to be a horizontal piece you know, so this way. It doesn't look like Now, when I'm doing pieces that are meant for a pedestal, I always put a slab at the bottom to help maintain the shape and help it with uh, weight. For wall pieces, I don't. Good morning, Sarah. a little bit of water with vinegar in it to attach this. Don't want to get too crazy with the water. It'll make this too uh, saggy and it'll fall down.
And actually, when the clay is really, really soft, I don't find that I need to use much water vinegar or slip or anything else. It's only if the clay is a little firmer that it's really necessary. And some of this is a little more on the firm side. So Evelyn's asking what I'm making. And I'm making a wall piece. Uh, it's going to be an abstract wall piece. So I uh, haven't decided on the shape exactly. But just kind of going with it. And um, so it's, I'm building from the wall side up, and it will be closed across the top. So you won't see any of this inside structure. So just, just like mashing that seam together inside and out, and then thinning the slab, kind of pinching it up and in. A lot of times when people are doing coil built pieces and they're, they're trying to do this pinching up, it's easier to pinch up and make it wider at the same time. Pinching up and in is a little trickier, but with practice, it actually goes quite well. Which honestly, most everything with clay is, as you know, it's practice, practice and practice. So like I've got a thick spot right here. So I'll kind of thin that, mash it together. So what are everyone's plans for Halloween? Are you getting ready for trick-or-treaters? Do you have parties to go to? Or do you decorate your house? Are you, are you gonna go out? And avoid the trick-or-treaters. Now this is getting kind of floppy here. You can see how it's trying to like sag down. I'm gonna let that just be. And get another coil right here. I think I'm going to work on the decoration of this next week, the bust over here. I've got some tentacles on it. But I think that uh, this week is just going to be focused on this. Just a, a few more, just a few more uh, uh, minutes for today. 
So Sarah says, I just live, love giving out the candy to all the kids. My neighborhood is packed with kids, so it's always so much fun. Hi, dear girl. Sarah, I agree. I, have, I live in a neighborhood that's really into Halloween, and we get lots and lots of trick-or-treaters. And it's so much fun uh, to see all the kids and the families, and I get to see a lot of the kids who uh, grow up in our neighborhood and uh, always really thrilled. We have a very active Halloween. And, uh, we have lots of decorated houses in our neighborhood, so that's also a big draw. So for this, uh, I'm going to give it a rest over the weekend and um, oh I'm missing some comments uh, so Stephanie asks is there a difference in how you're building up the sides compared to rolling out long coils what you're doing is easier uh, so uh, I don't roll out long coils because it's just uh, I don't need to. I can do whatever size coils I, I like. Um, and uh, it works pretty well, even if I'm not doing big coils. So I just, I just grab a chunk of clay and squish it into a coil-like shape. If I have a lot of space, I'll, probably, I'll usually roll them on a table, but uh, it doesn't really make that much difference to have them um, rolled out versus just squished into shape. Uh, so Evelyn, uh, I think I, I don't know why some of these um, comments pop up on one page and then not on another. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry to hear your neighborhood doesn't get trick or treaters. Uh, it's it's so much fun to have trick or treaters, um, but I know that a lot of neighborhoods have a hard time with trick or treaters. You know, if they don't have sidewalks, if it's not, the houses are too far apart, or there's not very many kids in the neighborhood, it gets difficult. So I think I'm actually going to kind of make a swoopy shape here and then I'm going to attach a little orb kind of coming out in the middle, sort of like a little wall nest, mother and baby sort of thing happening. And uh, so I'm going to make the ball so that it's nice, it's the right consistency when I come back to it. Uh, Evelyn says, we are all in our 70s and 80s. Oh, yeah, I, I live in a neighborhood that is, is all age groups. So we have, we have everything from uh, young families uh, with very, very small children um, all the way up to people who are grandparents even great grandparents, and uh, it's a it's a very diverse neighborhood, so that helps um, with the trick or treating. And a lot of neighborhoods have gone to trunk or treats, so they can have the kids kind of all be in one area. And uh, if there's a lot of trouble with getting kids into the neighborhood. So there's going to be a little ball. I'll put that probably like, you know, on the side. I'll see. But uh, paddle that into shape when it's a little firmer. Now, when I'm making something that I'm going to add to, but I want this to stiffen up more, what I'm going to do is take a 
thin, slight, thin, narrow, I should say, narrow strip of plastic and wrap it right around this top edge so that it uh, keeps this part moist. And then I'll leave the rest loosely wrapped so that it gets a little bit stiffer. And once it stiffens up, then it makes it a lot, little bit easier for me to add, uh, add more to it. Hang on, moving my windows around so I can see all the comments. There we go. And and then when I come back to it, this will be firmer. It should be leather hard by that point, and I can do more with. I'm also going to gently paddle, kind of round out some of those lumpy spots a little bit. And I'll come back and score it, and smooth it, so that it has a nice shape. This will be all smoothed out when I'm done. Sarah says, in my neighborhood, even the adults dress up and walk with the kids. Hot toddies. <laughs> it's just awesome. I just sit on the porch so that my doorbell doesn't scare my cat. <laughs> Evelyn says, I want to fast forward in time because I'm so curious what you're up to. It will be done soon and I'll be making more of them. I have to make at least six of these, maybe more. We'll see. They'll all be a little different. Uh, yeah, my neighborhood, a lot of adults dress up as well. Um, there's actually one house that does like big performance every year, and they have about 20 people who are part of the performance. Uh, my favorite was the year that they had a performance that was like a com a comedic alien invasion. And that was great. So uh, uh, there's always a lot of stuff going on in my neighborhood for uh, Halloween night. And uh, I don't give out hot toddies, but I do give everyone candy who shows up at my door, uh, regardless of age or uh, costume or anything else. And uh, no, no excuses necessary. I'm not worried about it. Parents get candy. Kids get candy. Everybody gets candy. It's freaking. So. <laughs> oh, Sarah, you didn't mean giving out hot toddies. You meant drinking hot toddies. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, too. So I'm going to get my bottom in here. And I'm going to let you all go so you can all get back to your studios today, get ready for your Halloween, and uh, thank you for joining me for a little while, and Evelyn, I will make sure that you get to see what this looks like when it's finished. I'm sure that it's going to be really fun. does kind of look like a giant egg at the moment. And once again, thank you all for joining me. It's been a great Friday. Great time with your clay. And thanks for Mamaco.